All right, so sometimes we get sneakers that release that we're not really sure about, and sometimes it's better just to see them in hand. So I was happy that I picked up a pair of the Air Jordan Legacy 312 NRGs, and I wanted to show you guys and give you guys a review of these shoes. What's going on guys, Hess here at CollectiveKicks.com and if you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a review of the Don C uh, Legacy 312 sneaker and you can see the box. It's a really nice box actually with the Jordan Wings logo all over the top in a metallic foil. From the front of the box, you could see, and these were only actually $160, which is surprising. Honestly, uh, they could have actually probably charged more for this, and they didn't. I'm glad they didn't, but there goes the box. Anyways, these are the 312s, as you can see here. I do have a couple other pairs out here for comparative reasons, because obviously you can see that this is a hybrid version of the Air Jordan 1, the Air Jordan 3, and then a mysterious other shoe that we don't really know what it is. There's a cross strap down at the bottom that reminds you of the Alpha Force. A lot of people said that this was actually from the Air Trainer as well. I don't know the origins of the strap. It's just a Nike strap. And then you have the side panel right here of the elephant print and here as well, which is not really from the Air Jordan 3, as you could see, or the Air Jordan 1. So it's kind of a, just an added little detail to the shoe that they added in the mix. But... For the most part, the shoe really reminds you of an Air Jordan 1 shape because it is kind of like the high top shape of the Air Jordan 1, as you can see here. And it has a lot of the same elements of the Air Jordan 1. You can see the collar section here, even though this is a neoprene material, not leather. Then you have the top strap here, which is the leather. This little mid panel is actually a little bit different than the Air Jordan 1, but has sort of the same vibes from the Air Jordan 1. And then you can see from the toe box area, it is like an Air Jordan 1. Another thing to note is the strap that comes up right here that holds down this is actually from the Air Jordan 1, as you can see here. Also, you have a nylon tongue, just like the Air Jordan 1, but this one does have a Just Don logo on it instead of the Nike Air, and I think that's a cool little addition to the shoe. Just gives him a little bit more cred on the shoe itself. As for the Air Jordan 3 elements of the shoe, first of all, you can see that the midsoles are exactly the same, as well as, obviously, the outsole. The other element of the Air Jordan 3 that looks really similar is this back panel right here with the elephant print versus this one, and then also on the back heel tab. This Nike swoosh placement honestly reminds me of the Tinker Threes matched with the back tab. So it's that versus like this. Obviously it's the same on this one as well. But And then the lace holes here and here are actually from the Air Jordan 3 also. So they did an interesting job of just mixing and matching the Air Jordan 1 and Air Jordan 3. And then this also mystery strap shoe that again was not really clear. I'm guessing the strap is from the Alpha Force Low just because Jordan actually did wear the Alpha Force Low at one point in his career. The other thing that I wanted to mention that is a little bit annoying, um, I like this colorway personally. I think this one's dope. They do have a couple other ones that I really like, but but they also have this Nike pack, like the Hot Lava inspired and then Command Force inspired. And to me, that makes no sense to make a Nike basketball shoe, especially the Command Force, David Robinson, San Antonio colorway inspired after a hybrid Jordan model like especially called the 312 which the 312 is the chicago area code which don C's from just really makes no sense in the end but ultimately you love it or you hate it most people are really on the other side where they just hating it i have to say like i like it man i think it's a dope shoe it's a really really nice quality material shoe the leather quality on this is actually surprisingly nice like look at this nike swoosh it's really soft and buttery even the white leather down here is actually really, really soft. I don't want to say shattered backboard quality, but this is like almost like that. It's really good. I guess what's a review if you can't compare it to shattered backboard quality, right? So let's take a look. You can see that shattered backboard quality leather right there is nice, buttery, but so is this. It's actually quite impressive for the quality that you have. So what is it about these hybrids that people just don't like? It's the fact that it's taking inspiration from some of our favorite things and putting them together. Like the Spizikes were the original ones that did that. And when they first were released, they, they were like well received. Like people liked the Spizikes. Those shoes in Nike were kind of expendable. So they just kind of released them in mass amounts and whatever it was. Eventually though, people started to hate on the Spizikes. You had some Spizikes that were themed after like maybe OG colorways. And then people were like, well, I would just rather have the OG colorway because Nike, after year after year, they would just release the OG colorways over and over again. So it makes sense why people would rather prefer 
the OG versus like a hybrid version that's supposed to look like it. Why would I want the dumbed down version over top of the real thing? I think that's kind of where people were at with hybrids. And then they ended up releasing more and more hybrids from different parts of different Jordans. And some people loved them, some people hated them. I personally liked them and I appreciated the design elements of bringing all the different Jordans into one. It was fun, it was like an Easter egg hunt to look at the shoe and go, oh, I see. This is like the Jordan 1, this is the Jordan 1, this is Jordan 3. I thought that was something that was fun to identify on the shoe. It was also cool to be able to know that I can identify most of the different parts of that hybrid shoe. So I personally thought they were cool. A lot of people hate on them. So why is the Don C Legacy 312 any different from the other hybrids? For one, it has Don C's name on it. And if you didn't know who that is, the Just Don brand itself is pretty strong. He's had a couple different collabs with Jordan brand with really premium product releases. Usually the price points are pretty high. So this is like the first step in a lower tier price point for Don C and Nike and Jordan brand. But the best part to me is like, it's actually a really quality shoe for 160 bucks. So I think it was a smart move for Don C to be able to do something like this and have something that's more obtainable for more people out there. Also again, like because they attached his name to it, I'm sure he wanted to have a quality product and they did deliver us a really quality product. So it's something that I appreciate. I think that some of the placement on the shoes is a little bit odd, but at the end of the day, like honestly, I don't mind it at all. I know the elephant print is interesting placement here probably would have been better here because that's where the Jordan 3 kind of lines up but for some reason I kind of like it here it's just different and it's kind of stands out a little bit and the Air Jordan 3 is the original one with elephant print so since half of this shoe is like the Air Jordan 3 kind of makes sense to have elephant print on it somewhere as for the strap of the shoe love it or hate it I'm kind of indifferent I think it looks cool but I like uh, the air trainer straps as well as like just the Kyrie straps and more recently the Air Force 270 straps I think they look cool. It just adds a nice little element to the shoe, just a little bit extra. And all in all, I think it looks uh, decent. But all in all, I think they delivered something pretty cool to the shoe. If these did not have Don C's cosign on them, I doubt they would have sold the way they did. Then they probably wouldn't have had the same leather quality that they have on them either. But, but I think that they did a really nice job on the shoe and it's one that I'm happy that I picked up. Originally, I thought, you know what, if I don't like these, I'm gonna sell them. But once I got them in hand and I actually put them on feet, I really liked the way they looked on feet totally keeping them in my collection. So that is what it is with the Don C joints right here. As for the fit of the shoe, I got a 9.5, which is my true to size for Air Jordan 1s. That's what I would recommend, true to size for your Air Jordan 1. But anyways, leave some comments in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think about the Legacy 312. Is it a shoe you love or hate? Leave a comment as to reasons why. And I appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I do post sneaker videos three to five, seven days a week. Just depends on the week. And then also a uh, notification bell if you want to be notified of when the videos go live. If you guys like the video, hit that thumbs up button on the video as well. It's free to do and it is much appreciated when you guys do so. But thank you guys for watching. At this time, if you guys want to check out any of the other videos on the screen, feel free to click them. And we'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace, guys.